In this short video, we'll take a look at one way of significantly improving the clarity of our PA by making what are fairly rudimentary observations towards a venue's acoustic frequency response. Say, for instance, we were to notice in the venue's acoustic frequency response that a band of frequencies were resonant, then we may choose to attenuate, that is to reduce those same band of frequencies on our PA's nominal frequency response, with the overall goal to try and achieve as flat as possible combined frequency response when our PA is working in a venue. Let's look at a case study. This is level over frequency, the frequency response of a particular hall. And it was created by pink noise and played through an intentionally relatively flat loudspeaker and picked up by a measurement microphone. By no means perfect science, this frequency response plot gives a really good indication that this particular venue is biased towards low and low mid frequency. Around the same time that I was capturing this frequency response, I was also recording some audio in this particular venue with a stereo pair of microphones. This recording is with no EQ and all parts of the system as flat as possible. The warnings of gales in the southern Sierra, 40s, Cromartie, 4th, Dogger and Fisher. The general synopsis of 06 double So it's quite easy to tell, even without sophisticated measurement tools and any frequency plotting, that this venue has low and low mid resonances and that's a function of its architectural acoustic character. To get the intelligibility, the clarity of a system as good as possible in a venue that poses some challenges from a reverberance perspective, there is a lot to be said for having a listen, particularly to some recorded speech ahead of a gig and just making those simple observations towards what frequencies the room is exacerbating. And here's the impulse response of the room with all aspects of the system flat. I think it's important to point out that it's totally not essential for us to have such in-depth information about a room in order to improve the clarity of RPA. I merely just bring this up because look at the RT60 in the top right hand corner. 0 0.09 seconds. Now this is the broadband RT60 and now on the screen is the impulse response that was recorded after some EQ adjustments were made to the PA overall. It was actually done by a parametric EQ on the master bus of the mixer. And here's that EQ. So it's a high pass filter starting to roll off low frequencies from the low mids around uh, around 240 hertz. And it's also a, uh, a slight attenuation as well in the low mids with a separate quite wide band attenuation. And for an audio comparison, here's a little clip. First of all, same as before, you heard the system in the room with no EQ at all. It sounded just as if we'd plugged the system in. And then the EQ shown on screen is, is added. And I'm pretty sure you'll notice when that comes in. The warnings of gales in the southern tier, 40s, Cromartie, 4th, Dogger and Fisher. The general synopsis of 06 double low. Low Fair Isle 994, moving steadily northeast and losing its identity by 06 double low tomorrow. New low expected man in 1000 by same time. High Portland, 1019, dissipating. The area forecasts for the next 24 hours. Viking, north of Syria. Southwesterly, 5 to 7, becoming variable 3 or 4 later. Now, fair enough, that was with speech. And the reason why I chose to do a speech example is because I thought it would be an easier case to explain. Music in a venue, well, subjectivity comes into it perhaps a little bit more perhaps word intelligibility isn't quite as high in our agenda and other psychoacoustical aspects come into it. A more marginal case wouldn't have worked quite as well for my example here, so we've chosen something that's easier to, to note. And of course, being that it was just speech, that EQ could of course been applied to the microphone channel itself as opposed to the master bus, everything running through the PA. But yet we noticed the resonant characteristics of the room. We didn't need to do a full-on frequency analysis to do that neither. 
clapping of our hands tells us something about a room, but only if our clap can recreate low frequencies enough. So best plan, make sure you've got time at the start, put your reference tracks on, be it some speech, be it some music, and then make the adjustments, get out into some listening positions and see if you're improving it. Couple of additional things, there are some handy and not particularly expensive analysis tools from the likes of ART, DBX, Mackie, to name three, but this isn't a proprietary thing. There are a whole bunch of different manufacturers making some quite cost-effective gear that allow you to bring up on a screen the architectural acoustic frequency response of a room should you need to confirm which frequencies are the most resonant in a venue. And in the sound engineering community, it's sometimes referred to as tuning the PA, and it's one of the building blocks of sound system optimization. And yet potentially it can be done by anyone with a pair of ears, or certainly the situation can be improved. And I believe it's definitely relevant to performers providing their own PA, and it can make huge improvements.